Hi, I'm Peter Kallenstrom of Kallenstrom.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll talk about the file share inventory. This is part of a series of presentations uh, that I'm publishing on my blog, but I also did on the SharePoint Saturday in Stockholm. And the background is that I'm trying to talk about how to move from a file share to SharePoint. And the first step in order to do that is to actually find out what you have on your file shares. Uh, that sounds simple, or just go out and look there, but, but you probably need to get some decent statistics on it. I'm going to show you a simple way of doing it with PowerShell, but the, the, I'm going to point out some things that you need to consider. So, of course, in order to actually do an inventory on your file share, you need to have read permissions on that file share. That sounds obvious, but you also actually need permissions to read the permissions on the file folders so that you can determine who is the owner and what unique permissions do you have on your folders in your file share. So that's a very important point. And usually that's a backup account or an audit account or something that you can run this uh, with. And to get some good statistics, you can of course use lots of third-party tools. I'm not going to point one out here because I actually have a PowerShell script that I'm going to go through with you that does the rudimentary steps at least that you can start with and that will give you some insights. It's the files inventory PS1. It's a PowerShell script that loops all the files in a, in a directory and it outputs three CSV files folders which just has the names and sizes of all the folders and the files of course has all the files and the permissions finally has all the permissions that are on these uh, folders. This script takes um, for granted that you don't have unique permissions on the files just on the folders. That might not apply in your case, but this is the, one of the limitations of this rudimentary script that I'm sharing with you. So the background of this is um, that I had a commission at uh, Migrationsverket, Swedish Department of Immigration. And uh, it turns out that when we did this inventory, it didn't actually drive the choices. I thought we would, could make a lot of decisions based on the findings of this file inventory. We could find that you know we have a lot of old files. Maybe we shouldn't migrate those files. We have a lot of files of particular file formats. Maybe we can discuss that. But that turns out to actually not be true. They ended up going through directory by directory and um, making decisions on that basis instead, instead of making statistical uh, choices or statistical cutoffs. It ended up that Migrationsverket had about 225,000 directories and the average directory contained less than 10 uh, files. That was about 1.5 terabytes that I was tasked with moving into SharePoint. The oldest file from that batch was actually all the way from 1980. So I thought that would certainly be a cutoff point, but it turns out it wasn't. So um, the cutoff points that I, that I was suggesting was that we, maybe we should just move the files that are created or modified uh, later than a particular year. Maybe we should move all the file types. We should just do the office files or just the office and the PDF files or something like that. But it turns out that they, they wanted everything moved. So, so that's an interesting choice. And I, of course, worked with these scripts using pivot table. I showed them so we could look at the different types of extensions and the different types of uh, folders. And we could make decisions based on that. So that was the uh, discussion helper. That, that's what I'm bringing to the table here, really. So let's go into the actual PowerShell script. I have that on a remote machine here. And as you see, I have a file directory, a very, very simple one. Uh, here are old files, and there's a pro um, project folder, and then there, underneath there, there's some year folders, and there's some office files in there. So very simple file structure, very structured, which is, of course, never the case in real life but I wanted to make a simple example just to explain the concept behind this PowerShell script. All right, so the inputs for this PowerShell is simply the path where I want the text file to be created and uh, the root directory of the old files. And um, then uh, the script is actually a one big function here, the loop subfolders and files. And what I do there is uh, I'm go starting with the root path uh, actually calling this function at the very bottom of the script here, loop uh, subfolders and files of this file directory. So I'm just jumping into that, and first of all, I'm just creating a file name here, 
which replaces any uh, dashes with uh, underscores instead. And um, then I'm creating three new files here, the permissions file, the folders file, and the files file. And I'm deleting that if it's there. I'm deleting the file, and if there, it's not there, then it's going to create an error and ignore that. And then I'm adding the um, content to these files. And these are just the headings. As you see, there are pipe separated. Um, I started out using comma separated, but that didn't work out because the files and folders can actually contain commas. So that was not good at all. So these are pipe separated. I'm just doing the headers here, and here you see the information I'm putting into the permissions. I'm putting identity reference and the access control type. The, uh, for the folders, I'm putting the path, the right time, the size, the file count, the levels, and the clean folder name, and um, the choice column that I'm going to be using in the next uh, demonstration. And finally, for the files, I'm picking up the path, the file name, the last write time, and the size and the extension. I'm getting all the directories first in uh, the root path, uh, subfolders to the root path. I'm just using the old dir command for that. I'm just getting all the folders and subfolders and where the object is actually a container, which is a file folder. And then I have a collection of all the folders, and I'm looping through those. And um, if it's not a null object, then I'm getting the ACLs for that. I'm getting the access ACLs. And again, I'm cleaning out the uh, commas and um, the, so I'm getting a clean folder name and then I'm getting the identities that have permissions and what kind of permissions they have. Um, and I'm ignoring some of them, the built-in administrator, uh, which is administrators in Swedish, and also the system account. And you might want to put in your own accounts that you want to ignore there. And I'm simply adding the, the permissions to this um, file. I'm building the script here, and again, it's pipe separated. And then I'm um, getting the information of the file folder, and I'm actually using the file system object down here, which I'm creating there, the FSO, the scripting com object, the scripting file system object, because that is actually much faster and somewhat easier to work with, in my opinion. Then I'm outputting the um, folder size to two decimals. I'm counting the number of, fi uh, of files in the file directory. And building a string based on that, with the, the last write time, the folder size, folder file count, as we see. And I'm also splitting the, the levels, I'm finding out how many levels down this uh, folder structure goes. And again, I'm um, getting the clean folder name and putting that in there. And then I'm just checking if there is a um, folder file count is greater than zero. Then I go through each of the files to build up a string. And the string again is file size, last write time, and the actual extension of the file. And then I'm adding that out into the file. And that's about it. And I'm just writing out the information to the host. All right, I'm just going to run this script now. And now it's just looping through those, and I think that's actually completed already very, very fast. So let's go out and look at the inventory comma separated file that I had here. Ah, my mistakes. I actually forgot to put the backslash here. Let's run it, run it again. And there we get the comma separated files there. There we go, much better. Now let's copy those over. I actually don't have Excel on this machine, so let's take another machine where I have that. And I'll just put these here on my desktop. And I'll look at the old file folders. I'm going to just go and open that with Excel. And here you see the files. And now I'm just going to go ahead and split this. I'm going to do that with the data tab here, text to columns, and these are delimited using the pipe symbol. So I'm going to input that there, finish that, and here we have all the information, each of those in its own column. Now what I can do is go into the home tab and apply a formatting as a table, 
that's very useful in general. And then I'm going to sort these. It's on the home tab here, sort, so A to Z, and then we have the whole structure there as you see. And now what I'm going to do next is actually go back to the table tools here and summarize this with a pivot table so that we can discuss this in group. And then I'll just import the size as a value. There we go. Size as a value. There we go. Put it there. The count. I don't want count. I want the actual sum of that. Sum of that. Ah, my mistake. I have a Swedish um, English issue here, so I'm just going to go ahead and replace. Did that with and there we go, replace. So you see it's actually finding these as text. That's why they're on the left side here. All right, I'm just going to replace the point with the comma. And that will solve the problem. There we go. Close. And then I'm going to go back to my pivot table here and do a refresh on that. There we go. And that should solve the problem. There we go. 40, yeah, I have 40 megabytes of data there that I just inventoried. And now I can go ahead and put the folder path. And then I can see the size of each folder like that. Let's actually do the other one here and do the files instead. That's a bit more interesting. I'm going to uh, open that in Excel again. And again, I'm going to go ahead and split that. Text to columns, fixed width. Nope, sorry, delimited. And pipe. Finish that. Yes. Now I have all the information here. Excellent. I'm going to again go ahead and format that as a table. And the table actually does have, have headers. There we go. And now I can summarize this after actually replacing the period with a comma. Replace all. There we go. Now let's summarize this with a pivot table. Excellent there. And then I can have the size down there as a value. 20 megabytes. And then I can see uh, what are the extensions for these. And I can see that I actually have 14 megabytes of PowerPoints. I have 4 megabytes of uh, XLS files. I can also go ahead and summarize this by folder path. I can get the summaries there. And of course, the last write time also. Now they're all from the same period there. So you know, actually, we have a little, little bit of it. Let's actually do the um, extension here. And then I can just go ahead and put a nice graph of that. And then we can discuss this in a group and see what kind of files do we actually want to move. So let's put a pie chart in there. And there we can see and we can start discussing this. So that concludes my demonstration on how to use that um, PowerShell script. Thank you for watching.